Bold Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery, adventure, and intrigue. All right, sailor, Havana, Cuba, where we started from, where we get off, out. How long can you keep it up, Slate? Come on, come on, off the boat. I said, how long can you keep it up? You've been sore ever since we left Key West. So we didn't meet him, so we didn't pick up his cargo. Look, sailor, a guy named Scarn sends us a wire. He says, meet him in Key West, move his cargo. I didn't want to go, you wanted to go. All right, and Mr. Scarn and whatever he wanted us to bring to Havana weren't there. But we had a boat ride to Key West and back. You and me. That's nothing, huh? Come on, sailor, let's get off the boat. Here, I'll help you. I don't need any help. What are you angry about? The money we didn't make? No, it was time away from Havana. But I didn't have to be away from her. You talk about Havana like it was a woman. (laughs) Do I? How do you talk about me behind my back? Walk ahead of me and I'll think of something. There's your Havana. A cockfight. Come on, let's take a look, sailor. How's your bloodlust today? Oh, let's get out of here. Consider it, sailor. Two birds with steel spurs slashing each other to pieces. Let's pause and cheer. Come on. Oh, let's watch for a while. People get to enjoy this sort of thing. Let's find out why. I don't want to find out why. I'll see you back at Shannon's place. All right. Okay, let's go. You get a bang out of watching that? No, it gives me a chance to get bitter. Makes me an honest man. Por favor, senor, senorita. Huh? The cockfight disgusts you, huh? Eh? See, si. your tastes are too delicate, or perhaps... What's this slate? A new way to catch the Yankee dollar? Or perhaps the Yankee merchandise. The lady asks you what this is, amigo. Who are you? Permit me to tell you the story of my life. I am a poet. I guess that's worth a dollar. Give him a dollar, slate. Well, what are we, patrons of the arts? Permit me to refuse the money. Permit me to return to the matter of the Yankee merchandise you have brought from Key West. This is a man with a problem, say. You are the people from the boat, the bold venture. We're the people from the boat, the bold venture. Now it rhymes. Nice going, sailor. Then it is a simple matter. Since you are the people from the boat, it is simple. We will make arrangements for the removal of the merchandise. Now look, Shelley, my... Mario... My name, permit me, that is my name. Mario, sure. I forgot my memory's a little shaky. Mine, too. Hers, too. So we're having a tough time remembering what this is all about. Slower reading, huh? Are you trying to be clever, mi amigo? Or perhaps you have pleasure in tweaking my patience? The merchandise, permit me, but the merchandise. It is a matter of life and death. When shall we remove it from your boat? The poet only knows one poem, Slate. Yeah. Wave him goodbye. A fond farewell, Mary. But it is a matter. You cannot. The merchandise. It it can mean life. It can mean death. You cannot refuse about the merchandise. The merchandise. If you want to be happy and lead a king's life, never make a pretty woman your wife. Therefore, from a logical point of view, marry a woman uglier than you. 
A pretty woman makes a husband look small, and then he very often falls his downfall. Therefore, from a logical point of view, marry a woman uglier than you. Ah, oh, Lady Sailor, Mr. Slade, why you come back so soon to King Moses? Because you love me? Why else, King Moses? I tell why else. Because on trip to Key West, something sour must have turned more sour. <laughs> Am I inevitably correct? You are inevitably correct, King Moses. You come back to make King Moses sloppy with happiness, Mr. Slate. Therefore, order me about. Bring us something to eat, King. Oh, an ecstasy, a joy, a frenzy, a keep. Uh, just uh, bring us something to eat. Right now, Mr. Slate. You really do love him, don't you, Slate? Uh-huh. Like he was my own. How long does it take for someone to be your own? Ah, that depends. Ready with the food, King? Ready. Yours, Mr. Slate. Yours, Lady Sailor. You talk, I smile inside myself. I get my guitar, I got song for you. Sing it, King. A lady approach who waits for Slate. A lady so handsome no one can hate. A lady who in hotel did register. A lady who bring joy, maybe despair. Perdone me, Senor Shannon, but I think perhaps you were looking for me. For Bibi. No, Senor? Well, I don't know you, but I I think perhaps I was looking for you. For Bibi. Slate. Uh, I want to explain something to you about the hotel business, sailor. I am what is known as a mine host. That comes in two parts, mine and host. Sit down, Bibi. That's it. Still, you have not answered my question, Senor Shannon. You look for me? Well, I look for a lot of things. Why particularly for you? Because you are the man who brought his boat into port only a little while ago. Oh, the lady wants a boat ride. Why don't you try the nearest tunnel of love, Miss Beebe? This is included in the price we must pay for the merchandise? No, Beebe. I'd throw that in for free. Now, wait a minute. You said merchandise, Beebe. Isn't that what you said? Yes. Beebe, the gentleman posed a question. Will you answer the gentleman's question? You know very well what it is we want. Sure, sure. But uh, let's hear it from your own red lips. <laughs> Now I understand. It is a matter of more money, huh? Well, we expected it, and we despise you for it. But we will pay it. I have room 6A. I will wait for you there. But give me ten minutes to arrange for more money. When I pay your price, there will be no more delay. Is it final? It is final. <laughs> Let's see, uh, 6A, she said. And that's what she said, Slate. That's just what she said. You know, sailor, I think I can handle this alone. Why don't you wait for me downstairs, huh? Because I'm afraid of the dark. I cry in it. That's what I thought. Now you know. Slate, that noise. It's already happened to us once today. Well, maybe the little lady's a bookie for gamecock fights. <laughs> hey, let's go. <laughs> Slate, look, look, her face, her body. Yeah, slashed to ribbons, slashed to death by a gamecock. Slate, oh, Slate. Now, how do you like Havana, sailor? <laughs> Mr. Slade, Mr. Slade. Mr. Slade is wearing out his office floor, King Moses. Tell me, I'll tell him. The police have made a fatty well to the front door, Lady Sailor. They are five minutes gone. Thanks, I'll tell Mr. Slade. You want anything I can do for the after the police occasion, Lady Sailor? You, Mr. Slade? No, I'll call if we want anything. My get on me in hammock outside. You open the window and whistle for King Moses, if you want such. Slate. Slate. 
What are you trying to build? All right. I don't blame you, Slater. I know. It's, it's hard to believe. What's hard to believe? Beautiful woman killed by a fighting bird, a bird with steel spurs on it. Oh, Slater. And at my hotel, girl locked in a, in a room in my hotel with a bird bred to slash for blood. I don't like cops in my place. Cops are for the tourist trade, not... Is that all that bothers you? The fact that the police were here? What's it to you what bothers me? I didn't ask for your questions. I didn't ask for you. All right, Slate, all right. Kind of a jerk am I, anyhow. A man tells me to take care of his daughter. So I take care of his daughter. You. What am I? Out of my mind? I don't need you hanging around here, sailor. I don't need anything about you. I got along great before... Before my father died? What do you want me to do, Slate? Leave? Well... Sit down, Slate. You're sweating. It's a trick I know. It's hot, so I sweat. You want me to fan you? I'll fan you. You like me to fan you, Slate? Like this? Uh, look at you. The way you're dressed. Jeans, the way your hair is. Man has to walk toward you to know you're a woman. Why don't you do something about your hair, sailor? What's the matter with it? Other women with hair like that, they'd... With hair like what? Like this? You can touch it, Slate. Touch it. Go ahead. Touch it. Answer the door. You answer it. Yeah. Better meet me. Hey, it's the poet. Tell him to come in. He can wave the fan. An explanation for the events of this afternoon are in order. See? Hey, well, don't make it tough this time, Mario. What are you trying to tell us? A tragedy. The killing of the girl, Bibi, was a tragedy. Well, what do you know about Bibi? Bibi was the sister of my wife. She... Please, what time is it? Hey, look, if you don't... It's almost 2.30, Mario. Gracias. Now permit me. It is very wrong that Bibi is dead. A wrong that is part of an even greater wrong. So help me What if... kind of wrong? Like so. The merchandise you have brought. Those of us on an island you know, here in the Caribbean. Those of us who wait for the guns. Guns? So that's it. That's the merchandise. Guns. Precisely. Perhaps there is a better way to purchase human dignity. But we do not know of it. We need those guns. And you think we have the guns for your revolution? Of course. Like so. You came with the boat. Oh, permit me. I will answer it. A compatriot I am expecting. He is to meet me here. Mario! Slate! Help him! He's shot! Yeah. Yeah, shot dead. Like so. To Bold Venture, our stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall in the second act of our story. A lady she come to Shannon's place, a delicate figure and clothes of lace. Then the lady she died in Shannon's place. A gamecock with spurs, he slash her face. A poet, he came to Mr. Slate, make big apology for being late. He explains his wants to Mr. Slate, but bullied in heart, bring him poor to stay. Mr. Slade, he turned to Lady Sailor. He says, you know... That's enough, King. Do I call the police again, Mr. Slade? No. Two people die in my place, that makes it personal. I like that poet. You're not always a real tough man, are you, Slade? I said I like that poet. And that girl, Bibi? And that girl, Bibi. What about her? Did you like her, too? She had a problem. She came to me for help. 
She died. My father said you'd be a man like that. Why don't you get out of here, sailor? Why don't you go back to the States? Look at the mess. I'm in it, you're in it. Why don't you leave, sailor? You don't know, do you? Mr. Slate. Yeah, what do you want, King? The other dead gentleman's papers from his pocket. Oh, let's have a look. Mario Pavana, 64 Avenado, Lorca. We're going calling, huh, Slate? And when a man like Mario dies, somebody's got to tell somebody because somebody might want to know. I would. I'd want to know. Well, let's go to Avenida Lorca, sailor. Yes? What is it you want, senor, senorita? Uh, we, uh, we come to... Is it about Bibi? My sister, Bibi? If you have come to tell me of her death, it has already been revealed to me. Well, just a minute, senora. I am called Celestine. Will it not be easier for you, so? Yeah, easier. If you're Bibi's sister, then the poet Mario... Uh, Mario... He's my husband. Yes, a poet and a husband. I'm fortunate, am I not? You are friends of Mario's? Yes, friends. Um, Sailor, I can't do it. You tell her. Thanks loads. Uh, Senora Celestine, uh, your husband... What? Uh, he... What is it of my husband? What is it? He's dead. Okay, okay, sailor. How long can you take to tell a woman her husband's dead? He said he was going to the waterfront to write me a verse. A little verse. Who are you? Are you of the police? We're Mario, Mario's friends. We want to find his murderer. It will not bring him back. Mario was telling us something before he died. About a revolution. About guns. Mario was to me a man who loved me, who wrote little verses for me. Of this other Mario that you speak, I know nothing. Who would? Senor Etienne Parada, maybe. Senor Etienne spoke often with Mario, late into the night, while I slept. I would bring them food, and then leave them to talk among men. Where would we find Senor Etienne? He has a villa, 17 Avenida Quarteres. I think there is nothing more for us to say to each other. Adios, friends of Mario. Come right in, senor. Senorita. Is your name Etienne? No, senor. I am the uh, butler. Where's Etienne? In the auditorium with the rest of the guests. There is a concert. This way. In here. I will leave you. Adios. Hey, some concert. That girl, the way she's dancing, Slate. She's wonderful. Yeah, real authentic. Am I being rude? Yes, yes, you are. Can't you see that girl's trying to express herself? I am your host. My name is Etienne. Uh, this way, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Celestine called. She told me to expect you. Did she tell you about her husband? About Mario? Yes, yes. Did you two kill him? How's your record, Etienne? Not flawless, senor. Uh, in here, por favor, this room. Pepe! Hey, what is this? Who is this guy? These are the ones, Pepe. The man and woman we have been waiting for. Now, senor, you will tell us. Why have you come to Etienne? Because I don't like my hotel to be loused up with dead bodies. First a girl was killed and a poet. Would you know why? Yes, yes, I would know why. Who are you, Etienne? Why should you know so much? It does not embarrass me to say that I am a patriot. You see, Bibi and Mario were revolutionary. They were killed by our enemies. This we know. They were killed to prevent them from taking guns across the Caribbean to our islands. The guns they thought were on your boat. <laughs> we shall proceed without Bibi and Mario. The man is talking like he's got the guns anyhow, Slate. 
See, we have them. They came on another boat, not yours. Well, use them in good health. Let's go, sailor. Uh, wait, senor. I knew it. Peek over your shoulder, Slate. I just did. Question, what's the caliber of the gun Peppy has in his hand? A 32 or a 38? Looks like a 32. <laughs> it's a 38. You will help us, then. Help you do what? We have the guns, you have a boat. It's necessary to have both to get the guns to my island. Besides, I prefer not to have you roaming the streets of Havana until we have disposed of the weapons. Who wants to roam the streets? Me, Daddy. Eh, por favor, senor, move quickly. There is a great need to hurry. <laughs> you admire the view, senor, eh? This cliff that screams down into the sea, or perhaps senor is afraid of such height. But the view is magnificent, no? The guns are nice, too. <laughs> you have exquisite taste, senor. In guns, in boats, and uh, in... Uh... In me? <laughs> Precisely, senorita. See how wrong you can be, Slate? The man said that you had... Get uh... off it, and the Etienne. What do we play now? Oh, no play, senor, I assure you. Hard work. Pepe is below in your boat waiting for the guns. You will see that he gets them. Then you will take us to our destination on your exquisite boat. You mean I lugged them all the way from this cliff down to the boat? Uh, not quite so hard, senor. You see, we are prepared. A cargo net, winch. You place the guns in the net, then lower them to Pepe. Quick, simple. Like pie. It'll be like pie, won't it, Slate? I'll help. Uh, no, senorita, no, no. You will simply stand there because you will inspire the senor to magnificent effort. You may begin, senor. So what happens when we're through here? You will be killed. Ask a silly question. Oh, but it's so easy for you. You have but to die. Me, I have to commit a murder. My heart bleeds for you. Thank you, senorita. That's enough, senor, for one load. Lower the winch. Aquí, one. Aquí. Sí, Celestine. Celestine. We're glad you're happy, Celestine. Yeah, we're glad. Thanks for saving our lives. It was messy, but thanks. My heart is filled with kindness for you both. We'll drink to your heart filled with kindness in Havana. Tell your boy to take that gun away and we'll go. You were so kind to come and tell me of my husband's death. I want to do something gracious for you. In Shannon's place. Do something gracious for us in Shannon's place. I will not permit one to kill you. You will die a suicide. I wouldn't have it any other way. Tell us about killing people, Celestine. Were you born that way or did it come on you all of a sudden? They tried to make a revolution. You were foolish enough to stumble into it. It is a pity you stumbled into the wrong side. You and Juan here are the right ones. You are all alike. Poets, revolutionaries, adventurers. All with the intellect of train fleas. Bibi, Mario, Etienne, Pepe. Oh, yes. Pepe is dead also. Juan took care of it. Bibi was your sister. Mario. They were fools. They are happier dead. Now walk to the edge of the cliff. Walk. You're happy now, sailor? You're real happy? What? You came to Havana. You got what you came for, huh? Excitement, romance, a tropic moon, people killed. You gone crazy. What are you talking about? What you wanted, isn't it, sailor? That's why you came to me, because it was empty for a girl like you back there from wherever you came from. Real empty. Why, why are you... Don't slap me, sailor. I'll break you in two. No one. No. Do not put your hands on him. <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> Just keep the gun in his back. They will kill each other. <laughs> sailor, watch it. You watch it. He's got a gun in your back. I have a gun in my back. One. Careful, one. Careful. The gun. Get it, sailor. Pick it up. How are you, Celestine? You let me go. Let me Don't go. struggle, Celestine. Relax. Enjoy yourself. I'm a 
tender guy. Oh. I'm taking you back to Havana. Fool, take your hands off me. Let me go. Uh -huh, <laughs> Celestine, oh. I'm holding you real tight till the Havana police take you away from me. You hold her that tight, she's not going to be in any condition for the police. So what about Juan? You got a gun in your hand, haven't you, sailor? Oh, sure. Sorry. I forgot for a moment. Oh, get with it, sailor. Keep that gun pointed at Juan till we get back to Havana. Then what? Then Shannon's place. Better back there. I want you with me. How do you like it, Slate? Like what? Dancing with me. Oh, it's all right. I'm wearing a dress now. Yeah, I, I noticed. And my hair. You like it this way? You like my hair this way, Slate? Let's get out of here. I like it here. Come on, let's go. Go ahead. I'll find somebody who likes to dance. I said come on. Why? Well, there's a breeze outside. What's a breeze got to do with it? I want to see what it does to your hair. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. <laughs>